the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give his life and his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> Well, here we are, my friends, in the fourth week of this sixth chapter of John's Gospel. How much more do we really need to hear about bread? And what does all this seemingly repetitious message about bread have to do with our lives in the here and now? The Jews who are listening to Jesus are becoming more agitated too. Last week, we heard them grumbling among themselves. This week, the grumbling has turned into an argument. Not only has Jesus claimed to be sent from God, now he insists that anyone who believes he is God's son must eat his flesh and drink his blood. Those Jews are actually repulsed by this idea because for them, consuming blood of any man, animal, let alone person, violates Jewish dietary laws. What Jesus is telling his listeners to do to the Jews is just plain wrong to them. And then it gets worse. English translations of our passage don't always make it clear. But in earlier verses of our passage, Jesus speaks about eating using a common Greek verb that means to eat, simply to eat. When we get to verse 53, however, <clears throat> Jesus switches to a Greek verb that suggests crunching or gnawing. Now that sounds a bit nasty, but in actuality, it's a graphic word that depicts eating that is urgent or even desperate. And so in our lesson today, it's eating as though life depends on it. Eating as though life depends on it because it actually does. Eating has life depending upon it. See, this is where Jesus gets to the heart of his message. 
unless we take him into ourselves, urgently and desperately, we are dead. It's really as plain as that. Unless you do this, Jesus says, you have no life in you. You have no life in you. So my friends, it really is a life or death matter as we claim to be followers of Jesus. When we look at John's gospel, it doesn't give us the Lord's Supper. There is a final meal that Jesus has with his disciples, but it isn't the Passover meal. Jesus doesn't speak the words in John's gospel that we hear in the other gospel stories. Jesus doesn't say, take and eat, this is my body given for you, or this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. Instead, John gives us these words about Christ's flesh and blood in the context of this chapter 6. It takes place long before the Last Supper or the Passion story. So our gospel lesson today is a passage that begins and ends with life-giving bread. Life-giving bread. The words in our gospel are about taking Jesus' life into ourselves. Jesus says he is the living bread. The living bread. Catch that? The key word here is living, not dying. It's all about life. And according to John, eternal life means abundant life. Our own Bishop Satterley in his commentary on today's gospel, points out that throughout our gospel lesson today, Jesus' concern is less about getting us to understand something, to try and understand the words about the bread, but it's more about getting us to eat. Getting us to eat. Jesus isn't making an explanation to us so much as he is making us a promise. He's making us a promise. This abundant life that we are promised isn't something that we postpone until the future. Rather, it is our promise in the present this life is the promise of being united with God, of being united with Jesus, and abiding in God, abiding in Jesus as God abides in us. So our passage today isn't a memory of what Jesus did in the past or a dream of what he will do at the end of time. But life lived fully in this moment, receiving grace upon grace. This is what it means to eat Christ's flesh and drink his blood in the here and now. And so as we consume Jesus, this is what Jesus promises us. He promises us full life in the present, and he promises that we will be raised on the last day. That we will be raised to abide in Jesus and have Jesus abide in us now and in the future. And we will live because of Jesus. And we will live forever. And so as we drink and eat of Jesus, <clears throat> We participate in the promise that Jesus fulfilled on the cross. As we eat and drink, 
Jesus nourishes our faith. Jesus forgives sin. And he empowers us to proclaim Jesus' promise to others. And so, my friends, as we live these days of uncertainty amidst a pandemic that doesn't seem to end, in a world that is divided in so many ways, where there is so much suffering and pain, Jesus gives us his very self as a companion on our journey, giving us the promise of abundant life now and forever. And as we are part of that abundant life now, Jesus gives us the promise that we can pro proclaim to others that we need not fear, that Jesus is our strength, that Jesus will always be with us in the midst of everything we go through today, and that we have the promise of eternal life. We are called to share the message of that promise. Now next week, we will conclude our march through John chapter 6. And we conclude it with Peter's recognition of who Jesus really is. You know, all the conversation that we've had since Jesus fed the 5,000 four weeks ago has been about bread, explaining, defining, and naming it. But Jesus hasn't really been talking about bread at all. Jesus has been talking about his own identity. Jesus has been telling us who he is. Jesus has been telling us that we can have faith that all will be well and that we have abundant life now and forever. Ginger Barfield, who is a professor at Southern Seminary, writes this. The point missed in the feeding sign was who Jesus was. The sign was to point to Jesus. Instead, the Jews got full of food and then just went back to how things were before. They went back to the literal levels of life and missed the depth and riches that were right there in front of them. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Son of God, sent from above to feed the world for all time. Jesus is the one who sustains the world in a way that makes living possible. Jesus is the one who speaks, and we know he is here. And so let us eat with urgency, my friends, knowing that Christ remains in us, and we remain in Christ for time and eternity. Amen. Amen.